54-year-old woman went missing in the Indonesian woods soon after a 22-foot giant python was spotted nearby, and the woman was found inside whole. So believe it or not, this does appear to be a real story and is only one of a few fatal human python encounters that seem to be becoming a more common occurrence. In today's video, we are going to talk about what happened to the 54-year-old grandmother that went missing only to reappear in the belly of a massive reticulated python, why stories of pythons eating people seem to be becoming more common, and what can be done to prevent tragedies like this from happening in the future. So if all that sounds fascinating to you, swat the like button like it's a giant python striking for your face, and smash the subscribe button so you don't miss out on learning the things about reptiles no one else on YouTube is talking about. So if you spend much time in the reptile news corners of the internet, you have probably already heard about the victim of the most recent monster snake attack. On Sunday, October 23, 2022, a 54-year-old woman named Jara, living in Jambi province of Indonesia, went to work at a rubber plantation for the last time. When she didn't return home that night, her husband reported her missing and began searching for her immediately. He eventually came across her tool she used at the plantation and a few articles of clothing. She wouldn't have just left these behind, so her increasingly worried husband enlisted the help of others to help him find his wife. The next morning, the security team at the rubber plantation discovered an approximately 22-foot-long snake struggling to move with a very large lump in its stomach. Word must have traveled to the nearby village because after that, a group of villagers found and killed the snake, then dissected the snake's stomach. To everyone's horror, they had finally found Jara. In a video I have included a few stills from here, you can get a sense of the disturbing scenes these villagers found. My heart goes out to everyone involved with this nightmare, and I just hope Jara's husband or other family weren't present when the snake was dissected. I, I can't imagine having to see a loved one like this, and really hope that the efforts of the search team and the villagers that found the snake at least provide some closure to Jara's family. Now, if you're a snake lover like me, you might be wondering how a giant non-venomous snake attack like this is even possible. Snakes are peaceful and will leave you alone if you leave them alone is practically a slogan on this and many other reptile channels, so what gives? In 2017 and 2018, two other villagers in Indonesia went missing and were later discovered inside reticulated pythons, so that brings us to a total of three credible man-eating snake attacks in just the last five years. Still an absolutely rare experience for sure, but to find another credible account of a wild snake eating a person, you have to go all the way back to 2002 when a 10-year-old boy in South Africa was eaten by an African rock python. If you know of other credible accounts of wild snakes eating people I missed, please let me know, but as far as accounts that weren't proven as hoaxes, this is all I could find. So how did we go from 13 years without a single documented case of a wild man-eating snake to have three documented cases in the same country within just the last five years? What is going on in Indonesia? I don't know, I'm just a guy on the internet with a biology degree and a lot of experience working with and even being bitten by large constrictors. That being said, there are some common factors in these most recent snake attacks that I think shed some light on why this seems to be happening more often. The first and most boring option, it's not happening more often, we are just hearing about it more. In 2020, the most recent year I could find stats for, less than 63% of Indonesians had cell phones, and people who lived in rural areas like where these rubber plantations are were even less likely to have cell phones. 2013 was also the very first year that more than 50% of the population had cell phones. So that is possibility one. Perhaps these encounters with man-eating snakes aren't as rare as we once believed. Maybe it's just more likely that a family member, neighbor, or search party member has a phone to document it now. But while the increase in documented man-eating snakes does correlate with the increase of cell phones, correlation is not causation, and there are some other factors at play to consider. Notably, all three of the latest snake attacks happened to Indonesian farmers who were alone at the time of their attack, and that is probably one of the single biggest details that can prevent disasters like this from happening. It is very easy for a snake over 10 feet long, let alone 22 feet feet long to overpower a single person, but having just one more person to either help make the snake release or to run and get more help could have prevented these cases from happening, and as simple as it sounds, the buddy system is probably the best possible way to avoid becoming a python's lunch. Snakes already don't look at humans as an easy meal, and having a second person to deter the snake from striking to begin with, or at least be there to start unwrapping and wailing on the snake, would have probably saved all three recent python victims. But like I mentioned before, these snakes were never meant to eat people and don't really look at people as a food source under normal conditions. So what else could be leading to the increase of these stories? Possibility two, habitat loss and deforestation. This is what I believe is most likely responsible for the increase of human and giant snake conflict. Don't get me wrong, I think more people having phones and cameras to document these occurrences helps make them more well known, 
But when you look at how much habitat loss has occurred in Indonesia over the last 20 years, it is easy to imagine why pythons are crossing paths with humans more regularly in this area. Over 90% of the world's rubber comes from Indonesia and is largely purchased by tire manufacturers like the Japanese-owned Bridgestone, French-owned Michelin, and American-owned Goodyear tire companies. While these companies do not own most of the rubber plantations in Indonesia, they do purchase their rubber from the plantations in Indonesia, like the one Jarrah was walking to when she was attacked. The the problem is, pythons are large predators that require not only habitats for themselves to exist in, but also enough wild land around them for their prey to thrive. For years, environmental groups have been ringing alarm bells about the loss of biodiversity in Indonesia, largely thanks to palm oil and rubber industries that have been removing native rainforests and replacing them with large monoculture plantations that can only support a fraction of the wildlife that the forest used to. This culminates in large snakes having fewer remote areas away from humans where they can exist without interacting with people. At the same at the same time, these pythons are likely facing a shortage of native food options. This naturally results in pythons resorting to food sources they wouldn't otherwise resort to. Just last year, in May of 2021, there was another giant snake that was hunted and cut open after a local man went missing, but this time the person was not found and the large lump in the snake turned out to be a cow. Although I could not find stats on how often livestock goes missing in Indonesia, from a few accounts I read, it seems like locals report that it is becoming a more common problem. Like people, cattle are not typically a python's first choice in food, but as agriculture and deforestation wipe out the reticulated python's natural food sources, they are going to be less discerning about what they eat. This comes at the same time, expanding plantations are bringing more farmers further and further into the forest these monster pythons used to call home. Now here's the thing, if this is the cause, the monster snake encounters will eventually stop on their own. It can take decades for a python to get large enough to eat a person, and they need to have enough food and habitat at their disposal for all of those years to achieve those monster sizes. Without the habitat and enough biodiversity to sustain their prey, pythons will stop reaching these monstrous sizes in Indonesia, and pythons eating people will go back to the rare event it has likely been for most of history. Which sure is good news on one hand, Indonesians will get to worry less about becoming a snack for pythons once the environment has been degraded to a point of no longer being able to sustain such large predators, but this also adds another level of tragedy onto all these stories. Not only is there a tragic loss of human life, but every time one of these snakes are captured and dissected, we are one snake closer to killing what could be the last of the wild giant reticulated pythons in Indonesia. Now this is not a species at risk of going extinct, largely because of how many exist in the captive pet trade and how widespread they are throughout Southeast Asia, but their wild population has not been closely studied in over a decade. In 2011, the IUCN listed reticulated pythons as being an organism of least concern because of how many exist around the world, but no research was done on the actual health of the general wild population or populations throughout any of the specific islands they live on. Since then, it is anyone's guess how their population in Indonesia has held up in the wild as much of their habitat has been destroyed over the last 10 years. There is some good news though. Goodyear, one of the big three purchasers of rubber that is partly responsible for deforesting Indonesia, recently announced that they would be spending $26 million looking into a type of dandelion that produces latex and can be grown and harvested domestically in Texas faster than rubber trees can be grown. If this method of acquiring rubber is embraced, it could lead to less need for continued deforestation, but that is a big if that also ignores palm oil demand, which is another big cause of deforestation in Indonesia. Okay, so maybe it's not exactly good news, but I feel like this video is shaping up to be another kind of bummer of a video, so I had to find some kernel of hope to end off on. So there's the small glimmer of some money and resources being put into solving at least one aspect of this problem, and there is some fascinating research and problem solving going on, so I'll link to an article where you can read more about these efforts if you are interested. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the most recent person to be eaten by a python and why this seems to be happening more often. I obviously hope we don't see any more stories like this, but it will be interesting to see if this trend continues over the next few years. I would also love to read your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you agree that this is just the natural result of encroaching on predators' dwindling habitat, if this is just a case of technology making the world smaller and letting us hear about these attacks more often, or if you think I don't know what I'm talking about and it's some other variable entirely creating this trend. Always a possibility. Anyway, please let me know in the comments below. I look forward to hearing your thoughts and will do my best to respond to every comment. And with that, thank you for watching. And as always, thank you to all my patrons who make videos like these possible, starting with my head herpers, Amanda Lynn, Lavenders, Bobby Cromer, Lindsay Justice, Deborah Torgerson, and Tiffany H. 
along with all the other distinguished names you see scrolling down your screen now. If you would like to join them and get your name in the end credits of every full video I upload, you can do so by clicking the link in the description to support this channel over on Patreon for as little as $3 a month. And with that, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I hope you have a fantastic week. I hope you don't get swallowed whole on your way to work, but most of all, I hope that you just keep herping. Thank <laughs> you.